Now, there's a bunch of different ways of approaching things. Like, uh, I've always been fascinated by the Mark Marinovich mm -hmm. method, and now Nick Curson mm -hmm. takes that method as well. Yeah. And their idea is that strength and conditioning is, especially when a fighter's in camp, is more important than anything. More yeah. important even than skill work. Right. Like, because you already know how to fight. So, strength and conditioning should take precedent, get all that done. To, so, get your body to the point where you have the most horsepower, the biggest gas tank the best tires, you know, the best handling. And then you already know how to fight, so just approach it that way. Yeah, so the, the guy that actually trained Marv, uh, Michael Yesis, is a Fullerton guy. Oh. It's Cal State Fullerton, so he was the, the scientist. Michael Yesis? Yeah. That's his name? Yes. Yeah, Y-E-S-S, -S, Russian name. Ah. He's awesome. He's like 85 now or something. And if you want to get massively entertained by somebody, like, he's a good one. Yeah. Because he's just very opinionated. But nonetheless... uh. Yeah, that, that is, I think, an important one. If you look oh, at it's very short. I taught in the area of biomechanics, kinesiology, and picked up uh, quite a bit of information that way. And I've been doing it ever since and started working with athletes, applying some of the concepts from the Russians to the athletes, and as well as what I picked up on my own. And I uh, started my business back in 87, uh, working with athletes, and been continuing since. Although now I'm basically retired, but I still keep my finger in a pie, and I still work with athletes here and there. Yeah, well, that's really cool. Your reputation precedes you, so oh, thank you. Yeah, you bet. Yeah, I've been in the game a long time, <laughs> for sure. I'm sure you've seen a lot of fads come and go. Oh yeah, too many. You know. Yeah. Most of the youngsters today in the strength and conditioning field only know the latest things that have happened in the last five years or so. They know nothing of the history or what was learned many years ago. I kind of maintain the information that was coming out in the 1980s and maybe to a good extent in the 70s is superior to what we have coming out today. I'm really disappointed on a level of expertise and the information being disseminated. Why uh, would you say it's better? What about it? Well, <laughs> if we compare the information at that time with the information today, there's no difference. We're reinventing the wheel. We've been reinventing the wheel for the last 30, 40 years. I haven't seen any progress in terms of new advancements, new things happening. Uh, strength, you know, everybody glommed on to this concept of high intensity, and that's all everybody knows. And strength training is more important than developing the ability of the athlete to become better. I see very few programs that say the athlete is number one, or they may verbalize this, but then they do high intensity strength training, where the numbers posted in terms of how much weight they're handling is more important than how they perform on the field. I'm exaggerating a little bit, maybe, but not much. But this is what I see, and this is why I say the information at that time, I could take a look at articles that I wrote back in the 80s and other people that wrote back in the 80s. And they're as good today as they were then. Yeah. It, it should be outdated. It should be old. There should be new things happening today. But there aren't. So that, that's where I'm coming from on that. Yeah. I think another example of that may be the recent rise in with development of terminology and rise in popularity of what's called DUP, daily undulating periodization. And that evidence-based community might be 5% or, or less of the total training community. And most of it is, I think, just compiled of various promises of magical effects and the seeking out of various gurus. And I think you've worked with several uh, folks in combat sport and, and track and field. And, you know, they're, a lot of athletes, unfortunately, I guess it's not the athlete's job to really know the stuff, but, you know, athletes will go from a coach that's just very good, logical, well-educated, scientifically based, and the next coach they take is some guy who just yells a lot and lies all the time, 
And they're like, oh, this guy's great. And it's like, wow, I guess you don't really know anything about how to pick a coach. <laughs> so it sometimes can be real sad when you see what kind of people athletes end up working with in real life. Oh, I know. Yeah, well, it's good to see that at least there appears to be a change taking place. And uh, hopefully it'll continue. Uh, but I, uh, I wish it would happen sooner rather than later. Because it's gone so long and have not really seen progress or very little progress. And even the scientific community, you take a look at most of the studies coming out of the universities today. And I kind of maintain they're not worth the paper they're written on. There are some good ones, but most of them are just trying to reinvent the wheel. Really coming up with something new. You know, a study comes out and says high intensity is great for improving athletic performance. They conclude this erroneously. And everybody jumps on the bandwagon. Now we got to all do high intensity. What, what do you mean by high intensity? Well, where the strength training program is in the 85 to 100 percent bracket, where they lift lifting weights in this range okay. for a few repetitions. What do you think of Louis Simmons? I think uh, I think well, if you want to use drugs, Louis is good. If you don't want to use drugs, Louis is not good. Mm. Yeah, I don't even know if I'd agree with the first statement. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm trying to be generous. We don't have to be generous <laughs> unless you feel like it. <laughs> yeah, it's. Uh, because he's a big proponent of that uh, style of training, that everything should be for a very maximum effort, uh, 85% plus, even 90% plus uh, most of the time, uh, at least on the days on which you, you're specifically overloading strength qualities. And um, he's a quite the fan of touting the various athletes he's helped uh, you know, improve their running times or whatnot. Unfortunately, most of those stories start to fall apart a little bit after you dig deeper into them. <laughs> but right. I, I actually have a question for you. Looking forward to long-term skill development. That's definitely a problem. Yeah, and I think this is one of the key elements that's missing in terms of developing a good athlete in this stage. We could change that. I think we could revolutionize uh our performances throughout the world. Agreed. I think that the only recourse is a violent, bloody, communist takeover of the United States and uh, to, just for the purposes of sport glory. I'm that telling you that way. <laughs> well, I can. <laughs> I, I won't say it. I was going to say uh, Go ahead, say it. I'm not getting into the politics. Uh, the way Trump is thinking... You know, he wants to be dictated badly. <laughs> Maybe the, there you go. Maybe that's and like once he did comes, for sports science. He could change it overnight. <laughs> well, let's hope we'll that do it. <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, Agreed. Yeah. Well, I think maybe we've talked enough. You think? I, I, I agree. I Thank you so much for taking the time to talk. It, it, uh, I mean when I say it's truly an honor uh, to have a conversation with you. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. And I've enjoyed it very much with you. Very cool. Yeah, it's uh, it's always a pleasure to me to talk to someone who knows what it's all about. Likewise. Yeah. Likewise. And I, I will tell you that the legacy of sports science that you pushed forward, there are lots of people pushing it along. We're not very visible yet, but we're growing more visible and we're trying our best to fight mm -hmm. off ignorance. So... Good, that's all we can do. Yeah, that's a good agreed. Well, short of a violent takeover fueled by Trump, of course. <laughs> all righty. Thank you so much for your time. Oh, thank, thank you. you. And, um, th th you know, this, this is something that's kind of like my hobby that I'm really sort of uh, trying to push as far as I can. And and Muay Thai, I felt in particular, I'm not sure how familiar you are with, with Thai boxing from Thailand. Yeah? Yeah, um, yeah. Got familiar through the well arts. Yes, yes, 
he's been doing some great work breaking down the fight strategies and, and everything that's going on there. Yeah. So an upright striking art well, rather than... I think we've had it, uh, or I'm getting to the point, spending all that time trying to get on Skype. <laughs> I really apologize for holding you up that long. That's not no problem at all. No, thank, thank you for the opportunity to, to have a chat and, and for sharing, sharing yeah. your knowledge there. I enjoyed it. It was, it was fun. And uh, we'll see what Lawrence can do and put it all together. Yeah. We'll see how he's going to take my little picture and your big picture. And put it side by side. So, Lawrence, if you're listening, good luck putting it all together. <laughs> I hope it looks good. Works some magic. He's good at that stuff. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, he's a good man. Had to help him out. It's okay. Good meeting you. Maybe we'll talk again soon. Something right. in the future. And uh, good luck in your work. Thank you. I really Great. appreciate your time. You're very welcome. <laughs> Thank you. Right on. Right on. Goodbye.